Hello, it's Scott Manley here, back with some Shenzhen I.O. And there, the game has finally left early access, so there's some new tests in there, some new challenges. We have the laser tag equipment. I have a friend, more, well, more like an acquaintance from back many, many jobs ago. He's always a bit of a nutter, and I guess what happened was he made a decent bit of cash with an app or something, decided to retire, blah, blah, blah. He's calling his franchise to be the Awesome Plex. Capital says. Okay, so we're gonna make scorekeeping wearables. And he said yes. I'm not entirely sure why. Awesome Plex! When it's done, we should try a match in the office. Yes, okay. So we're gonna be shooting Joe with laser tag. And here we go. Open the design. Ooh, lots of inputs, lots of outputs. So, what do we see? Hit is an input. Uh, respawn is an input connected to a quick connect jacket. Alive is an output. Oh, that's interesting. So I'll Input, input, output. And then we have trigger, input, reload, input, fire is output. Okay. So I'm going to just do the obvious thing and have these as my inputs and then do this here. This is my standard way to start this. And I think I'm going to start presuming that we can fit everything onto this single spot, single thing. So attach this here to X0. So this is going to be my ammo counter. This is going to be telling the system that I'm alive, I think. Uh, we've got to do this here. And then we need a bridge over the top. Do, 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 out of here. Oh, yes, we don't need that there. Not that I'm counting... Not that the amount of solder traces are a, a thing that I need to be concerned about. Okay, so... So we need to do... Trigger doesn't work. Trigger, fire, trigger, fire, trigger, fire. But then I reload and it starts firing. So we need to track the reload. We need to track the respawn. And let me just check the other stuff. So five shots out of ammo. Fire doesn't work. Die. Hit the reload. Pull trigger. Trigger doesn't work because I'm dead. Then I respawn and then I get five shots. Okay, so reload needs to work when I'm dead, regardless of whether I'm alive or dead. But um, trigger should only work when I'm alive. I'm... Mm, I've got two of these things. I don't think I could... Just wonder if there's a way I can get... This. No, I can't reduce the, the number of traces on this because I need two on this, two here, two here, and the trigger and the reload. So I was thinking I could get rid of one of these by taking the reload around here. But actually, having two of these on each is probably a good idea because it means I can test them with a single instruction, right? So, first thing I'm going to do is do a TCP on X1 to say, is it, um, I'm going to presume the, wait a second, is the top or the bottom? Oh, it, look, it's inverted. So, 100 is at the top. So, my states will be 10, 100, and 0. Okay. So, what are my states? This respawn will be 100. So, if it's greater than, then we need to say that we respawn. So, let's move 100 into dat that tells me that we're alive i'm going to presume that we zero you start out dead so you want to do that and then jump to jump to i don't know uh, sleep i'm going to just jump to the sleep thing and sleep will be sleep one we are not going to have a sleep sleep one okay no next if it's negative it means i've been hit so you want to move zero into dat, right? And that says that I'm dead. Oh, you know what? The What we want to do, actually, before sleeping is move dat into P0. And that way we'll know that we're alive. Now, I'm going to be doing that in every cycle, but maybe I can save it. Okay, otherwise, it's zero and nothing needs to happen. That's great. So now we're on to our fire check loop. Right, respawn, so we need to look for... Re so, okay, so we need to check the input from this, so let's just do a TCP. So th this will just do, this will call a trigger, right? TRG, or gun, we'll call this gun. There we go. GN. Test, compare, and in this case it's going to be... 1 is what I'm comparing against. So the input X3 against 1, and so if it's greater than 1, that means that we've pulled the trigger, so we're going to test for the trigger and we're going to need logic for that because we need to know whether we're going to be alive or dead so we're going to jump to fr for fire 
I'm just going to make a label for FR for fire. Not sure what that does yet. If it's less than, then that means it's zero. Okay, that's fine. That means if it's less than, that means nothing's happened. So again, we can jump to sleep, right? Otherwise, we're going to do the reload, and for reload, let's move... So we need to start out at zero, so let's move the value from x0 into p1. And after that, we need to jump to sleep. We actually don't need to jump to... Hmm, I'm just wondering, maybe I can... Maybe I can skip out of this. Move zero... <laughs> that jumps to sleep. You know what? Actually, we're doing the. This should be a scent here. Oh crap! Come out of it! Come back! Come back! I would lost my train of thought there. So actually, this needs to be the SN, right? So this needs to set the the thing high or low depending upon whether we're alive. So cut that out of there. Stick that there. And we jump to SN. Otherwise, we fall through to SN, and we're still, if it's zero, hmm. We're still sending it every loop, but at least we're making sure we're sending it at the right time. Maybe, maybe there's a way I can stop sending that every loop, but that's premature optimization. Let's just chill out and stop worrying about that. So we move X zero, and so we need to jump over the fire routine, jump to the sleep. So now, if... What we need to do is test if if we're alive, right? Um, well, actually, wait a second. We need to test whether we're alive, and we need to test whether... I'm not going to have enough instructions here. Because I need to do... Well, let's just add the instructions for this. So what we're going to do is... Uh, we need to gen. We can gen a pulse, right? So that saves us some instructions. So, first of all, test equal test greater than, test greater than. If my accumulator, which is keeping track of my ammo, is greater than zero, then we gen one, uh, gen uh, P1, so that generates a pulse on P1 for one and zero. And then that does add an extra sleep, which could cause some trouble there. Need to think about that. Would be ideally, we'd like to jump around, but we also need to subtract one. And that means we're going to get an extra sleep in there, and we aren't testing whether we're alive or not. So the trigger will work, like, I think, if, let's try simulating this to see if we've at least got some of the other logic right. Okay, apparently I died right away, so I've got something not quite right there. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, so step, what's about to happen is this will go low. Yes, so actually I got this the wrong way around. Yes, that is correct. So what we need to do is instead... Oh, crap, I'm really out of instructions here. Uh, let me, let me, let me, let me think. Let me think for a minute. Oh, you know what? Oh, oh, I've got a new idea. I've got a great idea. Okay, but I've got a great idea that's going to require moving things over or something. Let's, let's do this. I have a great idea of how to save things. I am going to use some binary logic here. Those instructions. Okay, what am I looking for? I'm looking for uh, an AND gate. Is that an AND? I think that's the AND gate. So, okay. I've got to figure out how to fit this all in here. Uh, I need to make room because I need to stick it. Actually, I think this might work. Okay, hold on. Oh no, I need to bring that back around. Oh, oh, this is going to be hard. Okay, I'm definitely let's move let's move everything over this way as far as we can. Cuz Yes, okay, this is me, sorry. Uh, making those nervous noises to keep myself thinking while I rebuild this entire structure. So what the idea is is that we have the alive signal on this. So we can just pass that through it and then use that before it goes into 
this signal here. So what we're going to do, we're going to have trigger come in here, reload comes in here, and then these of course go to X2. And now I need to bring the alive signal all the way over here, so I can actually cheat by, well, I wouldn't say cheat, it's, I can use the, the laying under thing to lay it around like that. Now, the trigger will only get sent if this is alive. So that'll save there, so we don't need to check, but we still need to try and fit instructions in. I'm sure there's a way, I'm sure there's a way I can make this happen. Okay. <sighs> oh, can I, can I save an instruction anywhere? If this is greater than zero, do that. Mm -mm -mm. Jump to fire. Maybe we don't need to jump to fire, right? Because we're testing whether we're greater than... And then the, ah, okay, this might work. Okay, so we don't, actually, I was doing this wrong. So if I just do the test greater than, if we test if the greater than is, oh man, I just can't do this, right? The test if the accumulator is greater than zero. That's fine, if that's true, we can take these lines out. We can paste them in here, looking good. So if this is true and this is true, so if we have more bullets, sorry, if the trigger is pulled and we have more bullets in the gun, then we generate the pulse, subtract one, and then fall through to the rest of the thing, right? And we don't need, no, wait a second. If not, we jump to sleep. Otherwise, we pull the test greater than, oh yeah, wait a second, why have I got testing whether the accumulator is greater than zero. We do not need fire anymore. So now what happens is we fall through to sleep. And actually here, okay, so now, 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 now. So if we move 100 into DAT, we jump to the send, send is here. If it is negative, then we need to jump through to gun, right? Jump to the gun, we're gonna jump to the gun. And then we've got room for one more instruction, which means I can make sure that I jump straight to the start from here. Okay, let's see how this works. Verification. Okay. Oh no, fire. Fire stayed low there. Why did it stay low? Because we didn't do the reload. Why didn't the reload work? Move X0 to P... Wait, 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 wait. Move X0 to P1. No, move it to the accumulator, surely. Yes, simulate. And I know that we're going to be playing at the Awesome Plex. Awesome Plex, Awesome Plex, Awesome Plex. It's the place for all your laser tag needs. With electronics supplied by Shenzhen Longten. Wow, okay, so I did eight and somebody did it in five. That's pretty cool. I, I wonder if there's more logic you could do like on the hit and respawn, if you could do it with a flip-flop or something. I'm gonna have to think about that, but until later, let's return to the email. Joe, it would be great if you focus on business instead of constantly suggesting distractions. Also, I would destroy you. Just got word from my friend, he's purchased the building for his first his first location. It's always nice to have a dream, but sometimes there's a reason you shouldn't pursue it, you know. Awesome Plex! Awesome Plex! Awesome Plex! Okay, so I did come up with an interesting optimized solution, and it's worth talking about because it uses this rather mysterious uh, part here. This is called the PGA 33X6. And this is, well, what this does is it takes three analog inputs and it produces three analog outputs. And there's a whole lot of states that can happen here. There's like an internal bit of state and uh, there's all these other uh, things here. So the way this works, and this is a mystery to a lot of people, right? Is that, say I have the respawn line coming in, it comes in here. So I say, if that is high, I click this and then I click this. And that means this is now connected to here. And the output from this goes through and hits the S, which enables this status bit, this internal status bit when respawn happens. So now when respawn happens, the internal data gets set high. Similarly, when I get hit, well, hit uh, goes high, 
connects through here and this connects out here to the reset so this will get set low so i've handled my hit and respawn within this gizmo which is great it means i don't need to write code for it unfortunately it does still use power now there's a third way i can use this i can take the data bit and i can and it with the trigger so the trigger comes in here and when the trigger goes high then it ands with this bit. So everything in this vertical row is anded because that's what this and gate means. And then this gets connected through the output to the input here, which then basically this thing will only send the trigger button if the data bit is set and therefore I'm alive. So we've handled all this inside this single gizmo and in theory, this should work. If I'm not mistaken, oh, look at that. This is beautiful. I'm glad that they added a part which allowed me to complete this thing using it. Uh, unfortunately, it actually uses more power. But hey, I used a lot less lines of code, so at least I made some improvement there. And I got to use a new part. Yay. But if I want to save on power, I move that AND gate back outside of the gate array. And everything, again, works and it just means that we're consuming less power in this area. I also optimized the code a bit here and got my power usage down to 303, one of the holy numbers of dance music. Okay, so while that gate array is really cool, this actually is going to use less power because none of these things switch uh, and it has fewer parts, so it should be cheaper. But it doesn't quite work and we'll just go through this. So what we have here is a very simple, it's something called a latch and it kind of works because Shenzhen IO takes the highest value of any of the inputs. So this sort of works right now. Look, you see it flips between the hit and respawn. The only thing is right now we haven't hooked up the trigger. So if I hook up the trigger and start running, well that seems to cause the alive state to flip early on so the problem is that we don't have any way to initialize this right now so i need to figure out how to initialize this to the dead state turns out though that there is a way to do this so i just gotta i gotta hook a few things up here a couple of bridges and then take an input through here through here right so that's hooked up and then of course i can add a little gen structure instruction right at the start to say generate a pulse on p1 at for you know one pulse and uh, for one duration and terminate immediately and that will make the dead side go high and force the thing into a predictable state and hopefully this thing should run and not fail oh yeah this is looking good oh darn you know why this failed because we had to generate a pulse right away and this thing immediately hit the respawn state so Ah, they thought about my cunning plan. We'll need to think a little hard about, harder about that. Okay, so after doing some research on Wikipedia, I found a version of a flip-flop, an SR latch. That's a set, reset, and, or, or sorry, or, and, with a not gate here in front. Uh, this should be more stable against my input conditions. And uh, I've added in some extra sleeps here. There's an extra sleep here and there's an extra sleep here because I've noticed that after we get the trigger and the reload pulses that we don't do anything in the next pulse. So if I add in an extra sleep there, it means fewer instructions. And if I simulate this, well, as you can see, it does successfully work. We don't have any of those weird transient glitches and ultimately I end up with a power usage of 215. So I'm quite happy with that. Still not sure how to minimize that production cost, but I'll think about that again and maybe come up with a solution in a future episode. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.